Hello, everybody. It's Jay Ramey, attorney at law, coming at you again with another episode of Know Your Rights. I am a criminal defense attorney in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and usually my videos are entirely done and start out in my office. But being the great videographer I am, <laughs> evidently the very first part of this video, I forgot to turn the camera on or I did something wrong because it didn't get recorded. Anyway, it doesn't really matter because it was just a short introduction. Everything else was recorded, so uh, everything else will work out fine. But this, uh, this first part introduction of the video is coming from my home, uh, not far from my office. Anyway, today is Know Your Rights episode. I believe this is episode six. And we're going to talk today about one of my very favorite subjects, marijuana. We're going to talk about marijuana law and we're going to um, focus on marijuana law in the state of Oklahoma. This will be the first video I make that's really focused on uh, Oklahoma law. Although there's a lot to be learned from this video to all of you out there from other states. But my specifically talk about the law, we're going to be talking about the law in the state of Oklahoma. So anyway, let's get right to it. Let's get to the big, giant post-it note that I did film correctly in my office yesterday. So let's get to the big, giant post-it note and look at the marijuana law in the state of Oklahoma. All right, folks, now we got a little bit closer look at the penalties for marijuana possession in the state of Oklahoma. The draconian penalties, I might add. Uh, they're kind of hard to explain because there's a lot of variables, so I'll try to get through this the best I can. A first offense, marijuana possession in the state of Oklahoma, is the most serious uh, misdemeanor there is because it carries up to one year in jail. One year in jail is the most serious misdemeanor there is of any crime. So a first offense of marijuana possession carries from zero to one year in jail and a fine of zero to a thousand dollars. Now that means if a jury convicted you, they would decide they could give you zero years in jail, they could give you zero time in jail, and they could give you a zero dollar fine. This is why I've been trying to get more and more people to take their marijuana case to trial and this is why I will not charge a trial fee to anybody who wants to take their marijuana case to trial because I think it would be worth it to start taking these cases to trial. In reality, on a first offense, if it's your first offense, you have no priors, nothing, you're going to get some form of probation. Uh, some counties want a year, some counties want 18 months, some counties want up to two years of probation for a first time marijuana offense. The wonderful uh, DA district that Rogers County, Mace County, and Craig County is in, they want you to do 120 work hours in that year, or they give you the option of doing 30 days in jail. So you, if you took 120, uh, 120 hours and you divide them by 8, 8 hours a day it equals 30. Uh, so they give you the, the option of 30 days in jail for a first time marijuana offense. M most people go for the 120 work hours. Tulsa County and, and most places want you to do urine tests as well. Uh, right now in Tulsa County they're not doing urine tests but they want usually 18 months to two years probation, all kinds of money, work hours, uh, fines and costs and all that stuff. Now let's talk about the uh, uh, something you need to keep in mind with a first offense. If you are within a thousand feet, like my apartment, my apartment, for those of you that live in the Tulsa area, my apartment is within a thousand feet of river parks. Even though my apartment has no connection to river parks, I cannot see river parks from my apartment. I have to walk out on the balcony and then look and I can kind of see river parks way over there. And for those of you that don't live in Tulsa, there's a big main four-lane street between my apartment and River Park called Riverside Drive. So there's really no connection to my apartment. If I was up there in my apartment just weeding out, smoking up, no one in River Parks would know. But it doesn't matter because the law says uh, within a thousand feet of a school, any, any school, private or public, university, private or public, doesn't matter, park, it specifically says recreation center, or uh, a child under 12 years, uh, tw under the age of 12. If you possess marijuana within 
any a uh, thousand feet of any of those places or in front of a child under 12 and when we say in front of if the child lives in the house and you got it back in your back closet they're gonna charge you with this it doesn't have to be directly in front of the child in the same household they're gonna end up charging with it if it's a first offense that equals a felony you are charged with a felony welcome to Oklahoma and then, and then that carries from zero to two years in state prison and a fine of zero to two thousand dollars now your second offense your second marijuana offense nine years eleven months later after your first offense after you finish probation or whatever you got on your first offense if it happens within nine years eleven and a half months it is a felony this is just a second offense you could have just a little bit of marijuana it doesn't matter it's going to be a felony and it carries from two to ten years in prison and a fine of zero to five thousand dollars now that used to be the law oh about two years ago but then our legislature said oh my goodness let's have some marijuana law reform in the state of Oklahoma so their big marijuana law reform was and this was it instead of this being the penalty uh, you know if, if you got caught 20 years later 30 years later it would be a felony and carry two to ten but they said no we're gonna have some marijuana law, for, law reform in the state of Oklahoma so they decided if your second offense was over 10 years since your first offense it's gonna still be a felony but oh, we'll cut your break it's only gonna carry from zero to one in prison and a fine of zero to five thousand dollars now Possession with intent. If you possess marijuana with intent to distribute, it is a felony. It carries from two to life. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you heard that correctly. A jury could sentence you to life in prison for possessing marijuana with the intent to distribute. And a fine of zero to $20,000. So, if you're one of these clients of mine who this happens about once a month, I have a client come in, it should have been a first offense, misdemeanor, but the, when the police find the marijuana, they ask, oh, what's this for? And he says, oh, the, the client says, oh, I was taking it to my grandmother who's sick in bed with cancer. I was taking it to my wife who's got menstrual cramps, and we used to live in California, and the doctor prescribed it to her. Or sometimes they'll say, oh, well, I'll, I was taking it to half of us my brother, so I'm going to take it over to his house, or we're going to split it up, and I'm giving him half. Or you, all it takes to be said is, I'm going to my friend's house to smoke it with him. Folks, that's possession with intent. This is why we never tell the police anything about our marijuana. We tell the police when they say, what's this? What's it for? What are you doing? We say, I got nothing to say and I need to talk to an attorney. It's that simple. We don't tell the police what the marijuana is for. We don't tell the police what we're doing with it. We don't even admit that we are doing anything with it. We simply say, I got nothing to say, and I need to talk to an attorney. If you go tell the police you're going to share that marijuana, even if it's just a joint, even if it's just a gram, it doesn't matter if you go opening your big fat mouth and say you're going to share it with somebody they're going to charge you with possession with intent solely based on what you said now there's a couple of things I didn't put on here trafficking in marijuana is 25 pounds or more that carries from four to life four years in prison to life with no probation there is absolutely no probation allowed if you get connected to trafficking and also keep in mind paraphernalia because everyone who has marijuana has paraphernalia I've seen a baggie charged as paraphernalia the baggie that was holding it that is the same offense as the first marijuana offense it's zero to one in jail fine zero to a thousand dollars so if you get a marijuana offense you're almost always going to get a uh, paraphernalia charge tacked on there you're gonna get two charges you're gonna get the marijuana plus the paraphernalia because they will just they'll charge the baggie if nothing else even if you didn't have a pipe papers nothing else they will charge you with whatever container the marijuana was in so that is a brief rundown of the penalties for marijuana possession in the state of Oklahoma 
Okay, folks, now what we looked at on the big giant post-it note was Oklahoma state law. That was Oklahoma state law. Uh, most cities also have city ordinances where they will punish uh, marijuana possession, simple possession. They don't punish felonies in city court, they only punish simple possession. And your bigger city courts, such as Tulsa and Broken Arrow, uh, for those of you who don't live here, Broken Arrow is one of the uh, major suburbs of Tulsa. They punish marijuana with penalties that include jail time. A uh, whole bunch of other cities uh, punish marijuana with up to some jail time. Now, on what I want to talk about, there are some very small cities, these little rural cities out in the hinterlands that don't punish with jail time. They don't punish anything with jail time. What they do, even DUIs, they will punish up to a maximum of a $200 fine. The reason they do that is because if they punished you with any more than a $200 fine, they would have to provide you with a jury trial and they would have to provide you with a public defender if you cannot afford an attorney. So for that reason, they only punish marijuana and everything else, anything else, DUIs, whatever else they may arrest you for, they only punish with a $200 fine. Now, I get these clients that come in and they tell me about their marijuana case years ago that they got in some little tiny court and they tell me, oh, I just paid it. I got a ticket and oh, I just paid it. Okay. Oh, if you just pay a marijuana citation, you have pled guilty to possession of marijuana in the state of Oklahoma. The most serious uh, misdemeanor crime, one of the most serious misdemeanor crimes there is in the state of Oklahoma. And if you, oh, I just paid it, that means you've pled guilty and you're going to have some consequences. Number one, you will never, never, not 20 years later, never get a gun license in the state of Oklahoma. You will not get a gun license if you pled guilty to a marijuana offense in the state of Oklahoma. If you were driving your car when the marijuana was found and you just, oh, I just paid it, your license, your driver's license will be suspended for six months. You may not be able to get uh, certain uh, government benefits like welfare and such. There's also some draconian punishments for uh, uh, student loans. If you uh, pled guilty to a marijuana offense or were convicted of a marijuana offense, you uh, lost your student loans for a year and then after a year you had to prove that you've been through drug and alcohol counseling because of course if you get caught with marijuana, of course you need counseling and drug treatment, of course. So. If you just give me the, oh, I just paid it, okay, that's great, oh, I just paid it, but you're going to have to deal with those consequences. So, my suggestion is, you don't just do the, oh, I just paid it. There's some other things we can do, things that can be worked out when we go to court so you don't get a conviction for marijuana possession. There's some things that can be done, uh, but, <laughs> you don't want to just go pay it. Or even if you have to go to court, just go into court and then stand for the judge. Okay, I plead guilty, you got me. Oh, I'll just pay the fine, okay? Yeah, one thing that keeps coming up, people call me up, they want to get a gun license here in the state of Oklahoma and they pled guilty to some marijuana offense 20 years ago. I'm like, sorry, you will never get a gun license in the state of Oklahoma if you plead guilty to a marijuana offense. So, a lot of people are wanting to get those these days and, uh, uh, if you get charged with marijuana in any of these little tiny towns and they can and they tell you you can just oh just pay it by sending the site just like a regular traffic ticket by sending the citation in with the fine you better think before you do that and you better call me call an attorney he knows what he's doing don't call your dad's probate attorney uh, because he's a friend of your dad's you call a criminal defense attorney that knows what he's doing especially one that uh I like marijuana cases. I do a lot of marijuana cases. Now, as I said when we were do, going through the big post-it note, we never tell the police anything about marijuana, anything. We don't tell the police we've ever smoked it in our life. We don't tell them we smoked it in Colorado legally two weeks ago. We don't tell them we got a uh, medical uh, prescription from California and our doctor told us to take it. It's none of the police's business. 
that you ever smoked marijuana in your life. I get these clients all the time that give the police their entire life history of drug usage, including alcohol and prescription drugs, and it's not any of their business. I've said it a hundred times. The police are not your therapist. The police are not your minister. The police are not your psychologist. The police are certainly not your attorney. If you want to go tell your entire life history of drug usage to all those people, fine, great. The police are not those people. The police are there to kidnap you off the street and lock you in a cage. You don't tell them you've ever used marijuana in your life. If they find marijuana in your car and say, oh, what's this? You don't say, oh, that's for my wife's home in bed with cancer. You tell them, I got nothing to say, and I need to talk to an attorney. That's it. You don't tell them anything else. Now, for those of you who may be traveling through Oklahoma or any other state, and let's say you got a medical card from California, as one of my clients did, Arizona, he had his medical card, or any other state, you better put that medical card somewhere hidden in your wallet. Do not have it next to your driver's license so when you give some cop your driver's license, oh, well there's the medical card. Hide that thing. Don't have it sitting out there where they can see it. And if for some reason they do see it, like you didn't heed my advice and they see it, oh, well, man, you got a medical card. What, you got marijuana in this car? You don't say, well, yeah. My doctor told me, so here it is, officer, yeah, my doctor. You tell them, if they see your medical card in your wallet and they ask you a question about it, you say, I got nothing to say, I need to talk to an attorney. That's it. Medical marijuana is not a defense in the state of Oklahoma. They don't care. You can tell them your little girl has brain seizures and will die without the medication and they will still take you to jail because they don't care. This is Oklahoma. The police in this state are out of control, crazy, reefer badness people. Now I'm getting all excited and spitting on myself. You people have to understand, the police don't care about your daughter who's dying with seizures. They will take you to jail. They don't care that you got a medical recommendation out of Arizona or California. They don't care. So if you get caught with marijuana or they see your medical marijuana card, you tell them, and if they start asking questions about it, you tell them, I got nothing to say and I need to talk to an attorney. Okay? And you, and you don't, and if they find marijuana in, in your car, you don't tell them, oh, I'm holding that for a friend. All right? That, first of all, that's not a defense. You're, you're not charged with ownership of drugs. You're charged with possession. If the police find marijuana in your car, when we get to court, they have to prove that you had dominion and control over that marijuana. That's what possession is. Did you have dominion and control? If you go admitting that you were holding it for a friend or that you bought it legally in, in California or, or that you just knew it was there, yeah, that's mine, well, then they don't have to prove anything when we get to court. I mean, they've got your statement. So you don't ever tell them anything about the marijuana. They pull you over, they find marijuana somewhere or another, they pull it up, oh, what's this? I got nothing to say and I need to talk to an attorney. That's all you say, that's it. It's very simple. If the police claim to smell marijuana coming from your car, what's that smell? I don't know. Well, you, we can do this the easy way or we can do this the hard way. And you look at him and you say, I got nothing to say, I need to talk to an attorney. Don't ever tell them you've been smoking marijuana in your car. Don't ever do that. You, you tell them, I got nothing to say and I need to talk to an attorney. The other thing we need to talk about, uh, marijuana in Oklahoma, because our wonderful legislature came up with this law about, I don't know, it went in effect about a year or two years ago. It used to be that you, if you were, if a cop charged you with DUI marijuana, they had to prove that you were actually impaired. Your driving was actually impaired. It didn't, didn't, didn't matter what the uh, blood test showed, how much marijuana was in your blood. It didn't matter. They still had to show you were impaired. Well, 
a wonderful legislature changed that law and they said if you have any amount any amount of THC or THC metabolite which is known as carboxy THC and it can stay in your system for up to 30 days after you last smoked if you have any detectable amount in your urine your blood whatever you are guilty of DUI drugs so you don't go telling some cop yes I smoked marijuana last week when I was in Colorado you don't tell some cop I smoked marijuana in California 10 days ago pursuant to my doctor's orders well you don't tell them that ever no matter what but you certainly don't tell them that when you're driving a car and you've been pulled over you don't ever tell them you've smoked marijuana in your life it's none of their business I don't understand these clients of mine they go through everything they can do to hide marijuana usage from their employer maybe their parents uh, who knows they, it, I mean, you would never even know that they smoke marijuana because they they, take, they go off and they do it quietly and secretly, and then they get caught, pulled over by some cop, and they're like, oh yeah, let me tell you all about it. I'll tell you my life history of marijuana usage. It's not the business of the police. They're not your new found friend. You tell them, I got nothing to say, and I need to talk to an attorney especially in the state of Oklahoma because as we went through the punishment for marijuana in this state it's draconian you don't help them out by telling them all about it you tell the police I got nothing to say I need to talk to an attorney I don't care if they we can do this he's wearing the hard one well I can smell it it's obvious you, don't, I, you just look at him well that's nice officer but I got nothing to say I need to talk to an attorney that's in. I have people tell me, oh, I, I didn't want to lie, to officer. I, I wanted to be uh, honest. That is the most honest thing you can say when some cop is giving you crap about smelling marijuana, or he thinks there's marijuana, or he saw your medical marijuana card. The most honest thing in the whole world you could say is, I got nothing to say, and I need to talk to an attorney because that's, by God, that's the most honest thing you need. You need to talk to an attorney. You don't need to be talking to the police. All right, so folks, let's remember this in the state of Oklahoma, we have draconian marijuana laws, okay? If you get caught and you get arrested, you're, you're, you're probably not, you, I mean, yeah, you're gonna go to jail and, and you're gonna have to bond out. It's, it's, the police always can issue a citation uh, for marijuana. I have that happen maybe less than 5% of the time. You would think the police would just want to write a citation and send you on your way so they can go catch robbers and murderers and rapists. But no, 95% of the time, they're going to arrest you, have your car towed, so another officer will have to come to the scene while the tow truck driver's coming, take you down, book you in, go through all that. They, they, they'd rather do that than be out catching real criminals. So anyway, yes, you will go to jail at least until you bond out. You're probably not going to go to jail on a first offense. But you're going to have to do a year, a year and a half of probation, drug tests, work hours. Again, I was, I was talking about Rogers County and, and that whole uh, DA district, Rogers, Mays, and Cray County. They want you to do 120 hours. That's 30 days of an eight-hour day for having a harmless medicinal plant in your pocket. So we don't help the police by telling them all about it, okay? You don't tell them your entire life history of drug usage. All right, folks, that's it. That's Know Your Rights, Episode 6. So let's keep exercising our rights with the police. Never waive your rights when having a police encounter. And always assert your rights when, have a police, when having a police encounter. If you would like some of my Know Your Rights cards, just send me an email. I'll put my email address up at, at the end of the video. And uh, send me an email, requesting the cards, and I'll get them out to you. All right, until next time, we'll say so long.